Mission 5, Snow and Ice. Welcome to Colin Hapsi Bahnhof. This is an ICE 79 service on its way from Frankfurt to Brussels. Open the doors to commence boarding. So hey there, draw your hair, and welcome back to the game's training world 2. Our final run today in the Chanel Fast Select. And, well... <laughs> last couple of uh, weeks we've been talking about how the weather was looking like it was going to get worse. And just as things look like they're about to clear up in the Towns 2 mission yesterday, well, it's only gone and snowed on us. So, uh, yeah, it should make for a, a rather interesting service today. Let me look at the windshield as well. In fact, that's gone completely... F yeah, even up there, it's completely frozen on us to that. going to be a, an interesting train to drive. So make sure everything's set up ready for our travel today. So reverses forwards, wipers are set. We'll turn on the AFB. RFB. We'll set that RFB. up to the speed limit right now, which is 40 kilometers an hour. And hopefully in about 15 seconds, we're ready to depart. So just in case we're waiting for that signal now to turn green. So, fifth mission of the uh, Schindler Fast Attack today. The final mission of this uh, scenario. There we go, green signal. And so, I guess the main thing we really talk about today is the, uh... Well, it's kind of looking back at what this scenario gave us. And potentially, what's going to come up forward now. So, we'll set the throttles to full. We'll let the AFB manage our uh, speed. Because again, with rain, traction's already bad enough. But with snow and ice... Well, this is a, a no-traction scenario, so you already can see it's dropped down to about 40-35% power up right now. Just keep the wheels spinning, making a connection with the track, but that's about it really. I mean, I'm just looking at the train there. The IC trains are white, but when put behind a completely bright white snow background, it's going to make it grey. <laughs> So we're going to go via location Horam in 17 kilometers. In about 10 meters, speed it goes up to 70 kilometers an hour. Well, down to 60 again in 200, so we probably. Yeah, we'll take it to 60 in just a moment. Wait for the road train to get past the uh, speed limit change. Next signal is a red aspect in about 500 meters, so we'll leave it at this current speed. And if we need to stop the train, then we can do. Okay, it's green aspect. So if I have a look ahead of us, okay, there is a, a stopping service in front of us. So we'll keep an eye on that. We shan't accelerate until it uh, gets a distance ahead of us. So that'll be a local talents two service in front. Just looking at the uh, the way the ice manipulates the scenery behind it. Imagine what that's going to look like at high speed. It's going to look beautiful, that's for sure. Right, so it's uh, another green aspect. So it has it cleared the station. Was it changed tracks? It looks like it has to change tracks. So let's use that point there. Yes, it is. And in front of it. So clear. So what we're going to do is then increase our speed up to 80. In about 600 meters, we'll then increase up to 240. And then from there on, we should have to get up to high speed. Passing the, uh, the underpass there, the one moment of clarity we've got. Well, going back to the open again. More rain will start to drop. Sorry, more snow even starts to drop. It's just slowly a case of increasing our train speed now. Should be quite a relaxing scenario, actually. I mean, visibility outside the window is going to be non-existent. But, I don't know. High-speed service, electric train motors, wiper going tick-tock as it hits the left and right-hand side. And just a light patter of uh, snow on the windshield there. I mean, that's kind of why I find trains so soothing. It's a very... It's an easy method of control. There's... Little calculation in terms of actually speeding up the train, slowing down the train, apart from, well, that's what you'll do. Speed up, slow down, 
determine when to brake. So unlike aviation where it's a lot more hands-on in terms of actually calculating your altitude, speeds, approaches and whatnot, with this it's you sit the throttle forward and you go. George train service as well, so actually running a slightly longer one today. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's running a 16 car service today. I'm just noting my wheel slipping as well, slowly starting to uh, jump in there. Even the AFB can barely manage it. There you go. Now down to 60 percent output, it has uh, slowly caught up again. Increase speed up now to 160 kilometers an hour. We pass through Horem on the central high speed track. So no platforms there. So let's continue at high speed. Go up to 250 kilometers an hour. And again, just look at the left and right hand side how the uh, the ice manipulates the windshield view. It's it's amazing. <laughs> I do like trains and mods too. I mean, the fact that I've been able to actually have a platform that can enable such high speed service from it does look really good solid 60 fps which is very nice to see and look at the uh, upcoming routes as well things really can get better as well I mean, you've got the IC no sorry you've got the uh, the Favisham high speed line coming soon that's the class 295 southeastern you've got the River Games Isle of Wight's coming soon as well. Isle of Wight, um, we've also got River Games doing a Alps run as well. You've got another third party developer who's also joining the scene. I can't remember which company it is exactly, but they are doing a US freighter as well. There's a lot of interesting stuff coming. I can't wait to uh, get my hands on some of those as well. Train some Mods 2. That's what Train some Mods should have been. And is now, I guess, as well. So we're now trying to crawl up to high speed now, 250 kilometers an hour. Tiny bit of wheel slipping, but that's just when the track gets particularly icy in some sections. And that comes down to the uh, the full adhesion simulation that the simulator gives you. So, what adhesion is, it's the level of grip, I guess, between the wheel and the rail. So, Unlike cars, which use a rubber tyre on a tarmac surface, which gives you optimum grip, regardless of what the angle of the uh, road is. With a train, it's metal wheel on metal rail. And so, both are polished down smooth. There's very little grip, very little adhesion that is created. So, in dry surface conditions, trains can run rather fine, because the weight adds to the level of... Uh, grip to the track, but the moment it starts raining, the moment it starts snowing and icing, there's now no grip, no adhesion between the rail and the wheels. It's also why trains can't climb hills, because unlike a rubber tyre, where it has got extra grip onto the ground, metal and metal just slides, so trains can't go up a certain grain of hill. I believe the steepest track gradients in the UK at least is a 1 in 40 gradient. So that's something really to the extremes. And I believe this is a certain modified train to run it as well. But for the most part, it is all just flats. So we're about to pass through Horham now. 20 kilometers to Duran. As it stands, there are no speed limit changes on the way yet, so it should be alright. I 
talking about destination. So this is a train to from Frankfurt to Brussels. And so again, it's an international service. Running over towards Belgium. As you travel at top speed, as you travel at 250 kilometers an hour, you can see in the top right just how fast the uh, distance ticks down for next signal. So we're going down 100, me 100 meters in about a second and a half. And then the moment we hit the actual meters, you can just see how fast it ticks down. It is crazy the speed that these trains can go to. That's why in some countries you have aircraft that compete with trains. So for example in Japan where you have the Shinkansen services across the islands, normally you travel between the different cities, you take aeroplane, you go by flights. But with the introduction of the Shinkansen services in the 1960s and with them going faster and faster and faster as they integrate new trains onto the network, aircraft companies now have to compete with the train ticket prices for people to even use them. And for the most part trains are easier as well. I mean, there's no security checkpoints, no passport control, nothing of like that. You just go to the train station, take a train, go from Tokyo to Sapporo in three hours and you're done. The flight's a similar time, plus has the extra security and all that. Just uh, just past eight to four twelve in the morning. So it's a morning service. This, presumably, people travelling for work now on this train. Obviously, it's in uh, well, this level of snow will be in January because January is generally the coldest month, regardless of where you are in Europe. So it may snow in December, but I just have it covered like this, almost as near January service. to 200 kilometers an hour and just over three kilometers so we'll start slowing down the couple of the moments and we'll allow the uh the afb to attempt to slow down the train there i mean it's wheel slipping it but it is doing it it's not wheel slipping too badly. The vibrations there are very, very minor, I feel they should be. I mean, if you've really bad wheel slip the train, the uh, G forces meet on the middle there, you can see on the bottom right, that will start shaking like crazy. If there's a tiny little vibration where wheel slip is in action, it is better to mitigate it, but it could be much worse. Down to 160 now in three kilometres. So we start slowing down now for the uh, station where there's a sharp bank turn. But soon afterwards, we then hit up the speed again and go back to 250 for a short period before slowing down fully for this uh, short, snaky, rather slow bit. So down to 160. It's a very minor wheel slip show there, so for the most part we can deal with it. The AFB will apply power if it needs to to try and stop the wheel shaking, so as a system, it's a very, very smart bit of kit that. At Duro, it'll be about halfway between the start of service and the finish, halfway now to uh, Arkham. 
Oh, well, apparently not. Stop a location, Stolberg. Okay. Yeah, I don't think I've ever really had a Stolberg stopper before. At least not often, that's for sure. We'll leave it at 160 for now, and we'll see what the speed limits do to us later on. One sixty as well. It is possible to uh, move the free cam faster than the train, and therefore, a chance to kind of actually watch us down below. Running at sixteen car service, you can see just how long the train is. The front of it completely disappears into the snow long before the back of the train passes by. Going out, uh, 160. That takes about seven and a half, eight minutes to travel. Gee, I was going to expect. So look out the right-hand side window. He's trying to look at some of the fields. No, completely frozen over. Same with the left, same with the roof. The roof is magnificent because it's in direct contact with snow, and so there are a few moments where you can see like extra new spots being added. So there's contacts, but it's just completely frozen over. It's completely ice up there. And it's just that one going first class behind us as well. In the UK, this would not be legal. You'd have to have a blank cover between the driver and the passenger section. The clear compartments would never be approved. Oh, it's turn two. I didn't even realise that ICs had a few compartmental carriages. The quiet zone, fair enough. I don't know that. I mean, compartmental carriages like that, very continental. When I mean, you look at some of the, well, especially some of the former Soviet countries, where, uh, well, they actually still have those kind of carriages today. So, for example, in the Polish railway network, if you ride one of the older intercity trains, so those that are managed by an EP or EU 07 service, or 07 locomotive, most of the carriages on that, you have a common area, but for the most part it will be compartmental, so you have quiet zones and families in certain carriages. And that comes back to the fact that those carriages are now near enough 60, 70 odd years old. So yeah, it's a very continental thing that. In the UK we used to have it as well, but they were mostly taken out of service back in the very early 1900s, late 1800s, back when railway travel was still relatively infants. to 120 in about three and a half kilometers. 
So we're now starting the final approach into the next station. And wow, don't think the transaction never stop at Stolberg. It's not a point to the size. So we start at Frankfurt, Colin, Arkham, Leeds. Yeah, so. I don't know. If it's based on the weather right now, perhaps it's a cancelled service because the train fade down the line or something. That's how it normally goes in the train some world. <laughs> Although the most extreme one was the uh, the train fire, if you remember that one from one of the German DLCs in Trains and Worlds 2020. Passing through Norrisberg now. Let's so slow down train now to 120. So three kilometers to go. We'll start prevent train now for a slowdown and eventual stop. Hopefully as we enter Stolberg, we'll have a moment to actually slow the train down. And not like in the Talents 2, where you enter the station at 60, it tells you to go down to 40, and all of a sudden it's like 20 on top of you or something. That was a, a little bit hectic on us, but hey. Two comes to go, down to 120. Probably start thinking about slowing down to about 60 next. From 60, we'll then switch over to manual control of the train, so we'll turn off AFE. Things to a halt. Down to 110. In fact, it's up to 110 in 2.2 kilometers. The station is 1.6, so if anything, we're trend now down to about 60. Down to 50. Let's turn off AFB. RFB. We'll reset the RFB. AFB switch there. And we'll now apply some manual braking to the train just to slow things down for the station. One kilometre to go, so not very far now. Up. Station should come visible to us very shortly, so just in the very far distance there, got a right hand turn coming up, and then the track will start opening out a bit. As we pass through a yard first, and then enter the platform, which if you remember splits into two. So you have a service that travels to the west, and you have a train that travels to the southwest as well. So you've got two branches that split off there. Stopping at location before. And stop. Uh, dispatcher, we are dealing with train. We are dealing with an incident at the platform at Solberg. He'll be routed around it shortly. Oh, this has been an incident at Solberg, has that? Interesting. Okay, I hope everyone's okay right now. Presumably, something to do with the uh, the weather. So go via location at Solberg. So do we continue? I'm not too sure. It's fine now. Wait for the signal to turn green. Wait for the signal to change. And I think at this point we shall leave training manual control. Just in case things do change ahead of us. There you go. Sounds now departing. 
We'll put a little bit of throttle in, about 60%. So we do stop at Arkham. Got about seven minutes until our arrival at that station. So if that's the case, what I shall do is we'll turn back AFB. Cut that, set you, increase you, and go. Yeah, so screen signals down to a hundred very shortly. In fact, it's down to that, sorry. Down to 40. Yeah, so it's just a case of now navigating the points, navigating the different rows of the track. And then in a kilometre, once you pass the station, you'll then be able to increase speed up to 160 and then continue with the rest of the service. Station now coming into view, you can see the footbridge that goes over the platforms alongside the station building stroke car park. Have a look. So that train there, currently stationary at Stolberg. Presumably, this is the uh, the incident one we're waiting for. We've got this train here using the terminus platform here. And there you go. Stop at Arken in 9.7 kilometres. Not too far to go. End service just up ahead. I presume that's meant to say platform. Four, three, not platform 40 for Sierra. Got one, two, three, and four. But then, for some reason, that's four, three, four, four. Presumably, it's like instead of platform 1A and platform 1B, this is platform 4, 3 and platform 4, 4. Something of that nature. Increase our speed now to 100, so 60 kilometers an hour. Soon to create a station back up to 160. Supposedly, we're only arriving about three and a half minutes. I'm not quite sure if that's realistic for our service in this weather. But we'll give it a go, that's for sure. The rear train now about to pass the points. As soon as that's on the main line, up to 140. We'll limit to 80% throttle. So what you can do is if the AFB is struggling to control your train right now, instead of leaving it at max power, you can limit it to something more appropriate. So 80% power should do us for now. Both in terms of accelerating and slow down. So perhaps this is I could have done a bit earlier, but hey, it's when you remember this kind of stuff, how it works. Yeah, go back up to speed now. Back, bring the IC to its uh, to its true nature. We will need to slow down shortly since we're going to enter the rather slow bit track here, especially towards the final approach to the station. That's the bridge and viaduct into the platform, and then bring the train over to a stop. 
So that right there now forms the very final part of my journey here on the Chanel Fast Turk. Very final bit of the trip for the ICEs and Tanks 2s. Then at some point we'll go back to my normal train simulator, train simulator live streams. Now that Microsoft Flight Simulator has kind of established itself, I'm going to turn back to a bit more of a, a normal streaming schedule. And then, well, just kind of seeing what happens next, really. Like I say, I've really enjoyed this scenario. 70 kilometers of track. In which you can take the IC up to 250 kilometers an hour. So it's a very high speed line in this. Not the fastest in Germany, but a relatively fun one. Tansu, really love driving that train. The ICE I've had a lot of fun with. I've really enjoyed this. It's been a very fun set of scenarios. And combined with the Bakerloo line, I mean, compared to the Train Sim World 2020, Train Sim World 2 is a very good step forward. I mean, okay, sand patch grade, CSX Heavy Haul we've already got. But it is a greatly optimised version of it. The FPS I've seen massive improvements with, especially in some of the long distance services. I've got a lot of hope in the future of this one. Right, better start slowing down now. Down to 120. Okay, we're going down to about 100 now. We've only 3 kilometres to go. We're just in case of actually bringing the train now towards a, uh, a halt. Turn two there, just closing its doors. Down to 100. Already at 100, fair play. <laughs> and it's down to 60, I think, after that. Down to 70. Quarter and a half. Down to 40. We're now entering the bridge and then the viaduct that leads over the city. If I jump forward a little bit, let's go for the, uh, this person's window view. There we go. So if you live in this apartment. How very German. <laughs> right, up to 80 now. Uh, anyways, we'll turn off AFB again, so we'll cut the throttle. AFB off. RFB. AFB RFB. off. RFB. And it's just manual braking now towards the end of the platform. Given that you are running a long train right now, we have to push basically right up towards the red signal at the end of the platform, so stopping is going to be pretty exact for us. Another 100 meters or so. The rear of the train is uh, slowly about to end the platform now. If we're lucky, maybe we'll get the uh, window canopy underneath the bridge there. At least stop the rain, stop the snowfall for a couple of moments before we depart for our next station. There's the stop board, brakes set, train, stop. 
Let's open doors around the side. And let's let passengers make their changes. Ah, just missed the canopy again. <laughs> At least these two. It's a slightly dry departure before they go back into the snow again. Oh, is that that guy who was sitting right behind us that entire service? Hit him in the window. Yes, yes it was. The two trains coupled. That guy's just taking a, a quick look at it for some reason. I don't know, perhaps he's just interested. And there he goes. <laughs> I love this sim. Oh, and there we have that. There's our driving graph. So as you can see, once again, with the AFB used, the speed control is pretty much perfect for that in service. No complaints on that. Level 26 on the character, level 9 on the Chanel Fast Track, and level 7 on the BR406 ICE3M. Stopping distance within 6 metres, which is fine. And a gold medal to seal the deal at the end of that. So, once again, a more than viable service. The one that I very much enjoyed. So, that brings us to the end of Chanel Fast Track. Like I say, I really enjoyed this route. It's a lot of fun to drive, a lot of fun to look around. The trains are amazing. I've really enjoyed Chanel Fast Track. And so, it's. I'll be live streaming it soon. I expect to be a live stream on this very soon. Because it's just too much fun. Too much fun. So, uh, yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed that uh, little mini-series. I said I don't think I'll do the sand patch grade stuff immediately. But at some point, we will go through the missions of that one. Just in case of when and how. And, uh, yeah. We'll go and come back for that in the future. You guys take care. Have a good one. I'll hopefully see you again for a few more Train Sim live streams in the near future. Until then... Have a good one, stay safe, and I'll see you later. Take care and goodbye.